Sonnet's latest and greatest doc became available to the masses a couple of weeks ago, and we got an opportunity to put its Echo 20 Thunderbolt 4 Super Doc to the test. Does it live up to its mouthful of a name? Watch your hands on video as we break down the features that make this $299 doc worthy of consideration for those looking to add a ton of I.O. to their Mac via a single Thunderbolt cable. Unboxing and design. In typical Sonnet fashion, the Echo 20 Thunderbolt 4 Super Doc arrives in a Spartan no-nonsense package. Inside the box you'll find the dock, Thunderbolt 4 cable, power adapter, power cable, Thunderlock connector, and the instructions. The Super Dock arrives in a black premium finish that feels good to the touch. On the bottom of the unit are four feet to help keep the dock stable on the desktop. The dimensions of the Super Dock are 9.6 by 4.2 by 1.3 inches. So although it houses 20 ports, it's small enough to rest on a desktop without drawing too much attention to itself. Connectivity. You'll find ports on both the front and the rear of Sonnet's flagship dock, but the most important connector, the upstream Thunderbolt port that connects to your Mac, is conveniently located on the rear. This coupled with the DC power input on the rear makes for relatively easy cable management. On the front of the dock, you'll find half the unit's eight, yes, eight, USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 gigabits per second ports, two in the USB-A form factor and two in USB Type-C. These ports allow you to connect all sorts of devices, but they're especially nice for connecting NVMe SSDs that feature up to 10 gigabits per second connectivity. Sonnet notes that each USB port on the Echo 20 Super Dock supports up to 7.5 watts of power, which is enough to handle the requirements of any bus-powered external SSD, and this means that drives with higher peak power requirements can mount and operate without issue. Also of note is that the Type-C ports on the dock support the Type-C charging specification, allowing it to charge devices even even when the host is disconnected, sleeping, or off. In addition to those ports, you'll find an audio combo jack that can serve as both audio input and output, along with the SD 4.0 card slot that supports faster UHS-2 SD cards. Also on the front of the dock is the power indicator LED, which lights up when powered and connected to an awake host computer. Now, unfortunately, this light cannot be disabled and will always display blue when being operated. But the good news is that the light features enough diffusion so that it it's not overpowering and needlessly attention grabbing even in dimly lit environments. Still, I would have preferred to have an option to turn the light off. Now the rear of the dock is where things get a lot more interesting. There you're going to find the aforementioned upstream Thunderbolt port that's capable of supplying up to 100 watts to the host computer, obviously a great feature for connecting power hungry MacBooks. Next to the upstream port are the unit's two downstream Thunderbolt enabled USB-C connections, which can each supply up to 15 watts of downstream stream power to bus power connected devices. These two physical Thunderbolt ports will also allow for a total of five Thunderbolt devices to connect to the dock at once via daisy chaining. One of the features that I most appreciate about this dock is the 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. As someone fortunate enough to have two gigabit fiber service, this dock allows me to utilize the full bandwidth of my internet connection. Like the front of the dock, the rear houses four more 10 gigabit per second USB 3.2 Gen 2 USB ports, two in the USB-A form factor and two in the USB Type-C form factor. And I should note that all the USB Type-C ports, including the two on the front of the unit, are charging compliant and can charge iOS devices and other types of devices that charge via USB. In addition, you'll find a pair of analog audio line out jacks for connecting stereo RCA cables. This is something that you don't often see on these Thunderbolt docks. These connections let you connect to to line in jacks of a preamp, integrated amp, a receiver, powered speakers, audio interfaces, etc. This can be super handy and save a lot of space because it means that you don't necessarily need an extra audio interface in the mix to connect to your powered speakers like my favorite iLoud micro monitors. You'll also find a 3.5 millimeter microphone input connection on the rear of the unit for connecting a mono microphone. M.2 NVMe SSD. On the bottom of the Thunderbolt 4 Super Dock, you'll find an SSD cover plate that hides the M.2 NVMe 2280 PCIe SSD socket connection. Users can thus supply their own M.2 SSD, such as the popular Samsung 970 Evo Plus, which Sonnet provided me alongside the dock for this hands-on. Now, this unit supports SSDs up to eight terabytes in size, and you can find a full list of compatible drives on Sonnet's website. Installation is extremely simple and straightforward. Simply remove the screws that keep the cover plate in place, remove the standoff screw, insert the SSD, and reinstall the standoff screw to secure the drive. And then next you'll want to remove the plastic sheet covering the thermal transfer pad affixed to the cover plate, and then reinstall the cover plate. 
Once installed, connect the dock to the host computer and macOS will recognize the SSD. Simple as that. You can also use Disk Utility to further manage and format the installed drive. And of course, you can install macOS directly onto the SSD and use it as a boot drive if desired. Now, it should be noted that the NVMe expansion slot on the Super Dock is limited to just 800 megabytes per second read and write. So temper your expectations with regard to SSD performance. Now, to be fair, 800 megabytes a second is nothing to laugh at. And and it's plenty fast for things like time machine backups, general storage, and even as a working drive for 4K video editors and photo editors. However, if you're looking to get the most out of these NVMe drives, you'd be better off utilizing a separate Thunderbolt enclosure or opt for a Sonnet Storage Focus Echo Dual NVMe Thunderbolt dock, which can give you some really nice speeds, especially in that RAID 0 configuration, using the Echo 20 Thunderbolt 4 Super Dock. Sonnet's dock pairs nicely with any Thunderbolt enabled Mac, but I especially found it useful when paired with my M2 Mac Mini. The Mac Mini lacks any front facing I.O. like the larger Mac Studio, so I found the four USB ports on the front to be a real convenience for my workflow. And the Mac Mini outright lacks an SD card slot either on front or on the rear, so having SD 4.0 connectivity right on front of the dock is a great feature. I also appreciated the fact that the SD card reader is not only fast, being UHS 2 compatible, but it's also very reliable. I often find standalone SD card readers to be sort of finicky. Even the ones built into some Macs can be hit or miss, but the SD card slot on the Sonic Super Dock work reliably every time I inserted an SD card. I also enjoyed the SuperDock's 2.5 gigabit ethernet connectivity. And as I mentioned earlier, I have two gigabit fiber service, which means that a standard ethernet connection slows down my internet speeds. And I often get the full 2.5 gigabit connection on uploads, which is great for someone like me who uploads multi gigabit YouTube videos on a semi-regular basis. And while the SuperDock features just two physical downstream Thunderbolt ports, you can actually connect up to five Thunderbolt devices if your additional peripheral support daisy chaining. In my testing, I connected several devices to the two Thunderbolt ports on Sonnet's dock. A second dock, which acted sort of like a hub, which then connected the 6K Pro Display XDR, my Universal Audio Apollo Twin X audio interface, and my 8 terabyte external SSD. And then I also connected another 4 terabyte SSD to the second Thunderbolt port on the Super Dock. All these items connected without missing a beat. As I noted, I use the Pro Display XDR in my day-to-day -day workflow, so I don't really use multiple monitors. But that being said, the Echo 20 Thunderbolt 4 Super Dock can support up to two 6K Pro Display XDRs at 60 Hz if you got it like that. And it can even support a single 8K display at 60 Hz via the HDMI port on the rear. 9 to 5 max take. The Sonnet Echo 20 Thunderbolt 4 Super Dock brings tons of I.O. 20 ports in all to your Mac via a single Thunderbolt connection. It's a well-designed piece of kit that can serve as the backbone of your desktop setup, whether you're using a traditional desktop like an iMac or even a Mac Mini, and especially if you're using a laptop that you wish to keep charged via that 100 watt maximum power output. At $299, it's a highly competitive option for those looking for a way to connect all the things to their Mac. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.